I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. Appreciate you getting up at this early hour. Uh, they had a good breakfast over. Of course, I didn't eat anything, but uh, if you hear me grunting and a growling, and I say something crazy. I, I've got back trouble, and I'm on some painkiller right now, but uh, I could say things that's probably not right, but uh, I'll try to be the best I can. I would like to uh, recognize Mayor Ronnie Michaels from the city and uh, the new EDC director for the city, Mark Donham. And I said, we've got a few people here, I believe, running for something here in this county. I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, I see Jan, and I don't know where's Bill Lawhorn at. I said, we've got a, uh, Scott, where's Scott at? Up there, Scott. I don't know what they're running for. I'd be running for the county line, I reckon. But <laughs> Godspeed on all of you. But uh, like I say, I do appreciate you all being here. And, and I'm not going to stand here and take a whole lot of time. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Paul and let him introduce everyone. And Dr. Kays, appreciate you being here this morning helping us with it. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And welcome, everybody. Um, uh, this is the second of a series of programs that we're offering to uh, reach out to our existing industry to share uh, information about resources and programs and, and ways that we can help them uh, in their business and, and uh, foster the growth of their business. Uh, our last uh, program was on the county's uh, project review committee. Today we're going to be talking about uh, training and some of the training programs that are out there available to businesses. Uh, and we're, we're delighted to have a distinguished panel uh, to share information uh, about some of the key uh, programs. And these are some of our key partners in workforce development. Uh, there are others, and uh, we'll, we'll have programs about other uh, topics as we go along. But, uh, uh, and Dr. Case is going to introduce the panel here in a moment. I just uh, uh, encourage you to um, reach out to us. Uh, Krista Bowers is here, in, uh, and uh, between myself and, and Krista, if you have any specific needs or if you have any questions after today, and you don't know how everybody uh, works together, we encourage you to uh, reach out to us and we'll get the right people in front of you for the, for the right reasons. So um, we, we uh, are very delighted to have uh, our teammates here in, in workforce development. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Dr. Brenda Case from Stanley Community College. Thank you. Paul, thank you. Good morning. And on behalf of our Board of Trustees, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students, welcome. We're so glad to have you on campus this morning. We're also very pleased to be teaming with uh, the EDC as well as the Stanley County Chamber of Commerce in order to bring these breakfast series to you. I can tell you that uh, you are in for a treat this morning. We do have a panel of experts. These are all people that I admire. They are phenomenal resources for getting employees and prospective employees in place for business and industry throughout Stanley County, and not only getting them in place, but making sure that their knowledge, their skills, and their attitudes are honed and ready to be productive in the workforce. I want to introduce each of these individuals to you this morning. They have a background that is as long as my arm, but they have sent me an abbreviated version of their Vita, but you need to know a little bit about these individuals and the wealth of experience that they bring to the table for us. I'm gonna start with, uh, although I'd like to claim each and every one of them as a part of the SCC family, I am going to start with uh, one of SCC's own, and that's, of course, Marion Kinley. Wave, Marion. With over 30 years of experience as human resource training manager in manufacturing, Mary was offered the position of business and industry training director in 2005 at Stanley Community College. In 2012, she became the director of SCC's newly formed Economic Development Division, which provides training for business and industry in Stanley County under the customized training program and business and industry training program. She attended Texas Women's University and Pfeiffer University, working on her bachelor's degree in business administration. Next on the panel this morning, we have uh, Mr. Don Honeycutt. He is the Regional Director for Customized Training at the North Carolina Community College System. 
Don holds a Bachelor's of Science degree from uh, Eastern Carolina University and an MS degree from A&T State University in Industrial Education. After spending 20 years in industrial sales, he returned to assume the position of Business and Industry Training Director at Davidson County Community College in 2003. In 2005, he began his current role as Regional Director with the North Carolina Community College System. In his position, Don has administered training for both the Piedmont Triad and Charlotte regions of North Carolina. Currently, he works with 11 community colleges, and we're lucky that uh, we get to work with Don, and oversees 104 customized training projects in the central region of the state. Don, wave at us. Good. <laughs> And finally, uh, least but uh, definitely not last, is Vail Carter. Vail has been employed as Business Services Coordinator for the Central Carolina Workforce Development Board for nine years. His prior work experience includes other positions in workforce development, nonprofit development, and banking. He has a degree in business administration from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, where he was inducted into their Alumni Hall of Fame in 1994. As business services coordinator, Val is in constant contact with employers in the seven county region he serves and collaborates with others to gather business intelligence and improve workforce delivery. He spearheaded the 2012 and 2014 skills survey of North Carolina employers and wrote the report uh, that garnered national recognition. He holds national designations as a certified workforce development professional and an AC authorized job profiler. Vale, I want to tell you, we have referred to that report over and over again in a lot of our grant applications, and it has helped us in order to get some of the funds we needed for our Advanced Manufacturing and Industrial Technology Center. So join me in welcoming this panel of experts this morning. They're going to give just a general overview with regards to uh, each of uh, their skill sets, and then we're going to have some question and answer sessions, including question and answer sessions from each of you in the audience. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Don Honeycutt. That's a good Stanley County name, don't you think? As a matter of fact, I do have family ties to this region, uh, and every time I get back to the the Albemarle Locust area, I feel almost at home, so it's great to be here with you this morning. I uh, just wanted to take a few minutes, and Marion and I are going to kind of tag team this a little bit and talk with you about customized training. Um, now many of you may have heard the term customized training in relation to advanced manufacturing, which is a key buzzword this day and time, but we wanted to give you a little insight as to what customized training is all about. So um, we will just start from there. Everybody see this okay? And I hope you did have a chance to pick up one of these flyers, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> allergy season, uh, as you came in this morning, and this will give you a little bit of an overview too, but just to give you a historical perspective, some 50 years ago, North Carolina realized the importance of training to have a well-skilled, well-educated workforce for business and industry to succeed in North Carolina. So the legislature at that time appropriated funds to support that through the community college system. So we do have funding that is supported through the state legislature on an ongoing basis uh, to support our programs to help support training for business and industry. Now, we've all heard about tax cuts and all of the things that go on in Raleigh. We have fortunately, fortunately, over the years, been able to sustain our budget without any cuts because the legislature understands and realizes the value of what this program does for business and industry in the state. And we have seen tremendous examples of that right here in Stanley County. Um, Marion has worked with a number of you, she's worked with a number of industries in this area to provide this type of training to get the skill sets of those individuals up, the workforce skill sets up to where they need to be to maintain and sustain their credibility this day and time. So let me just talk a little bit about what customized training really is and there's a synopsis, <clears throat> excuse me again, a synopsis on the page that you have in front of you 
but uh, just to read, customized training supports the economic growth or development efforts of the state by, by providing education and training, by providing education and training. Um, th this is a very, very important role, and it says a lot to, about what we do and how we go about doing it. This program is administered through the 58 community colleges within the state, and uh, we, we work diligently with programs within the college to make this type of training available uh, to companies and businesses within the region. Um, see if I can, oh, I got to do it this way. There we go. Okay, this is just to give you a little idea of what we actually do here, it supports economic development efforts for the state. We are tied in directly with the Department of Commerce. Even though we are part of the community college system, if a company is coming to Stanley County, the first thing that they ask the Department of Commerce is about the workforce. What is the quality of the workforce? What kind of training is offered for people that we hire to get their skill sets to our standards? And this is what we're all about. This is what we're all about as far as new uh, companies coming into the area or even existing business in the area. So we are a vital part of economic development for the state. Uh, again, providing customized training for business and industry. Um, we enhance the growth potential of companies. Now, what does that mean? The growth potential, every company wants to grow. But in order to do that, you've got to have employees to make that happen. We have to have educated employees. We have to have employees with the right skill sets to make production increase. So this is where this program comes in and enhances that capability of companies. Um, it increases the retention of the workforce. A skilled workforce is a happy workforce. You put a person in a job that they know nothing about, that they're not trained to do, how long are they gonna last? Not very long. I go back to the old adage, many of you might have remembered, most of you are too young, the uh, Ethel and Lucy scenario in the candy factory. How many of you remember that? Uh, yeah, okay. Wrong, real wrong people in a position. It was pretty easy at first, but when things got tough, what happened? It wasn't for them. It wasn't for them. So I kind of use that analogy. If you got a, a, a skilled, trained workforce to be able to handle that type of production capability, they are happy, they make things happen, and this is what we're all about too, making those things happen. Um, preparing North Carolina's workforce skills. And that's what we work through the college to make that happen. And you'll see in just a moment, we'd take, we'd have other venues to make that happen as well. Who is eligible for this type of program? When the program was first initiated some 50 years ago, as I mentioned, it was directed solely at manufacturing. Um, the legacy industries within North Carolina, the tobacco, the furniture, the textiles. These are the folks that the North Carolina wanted to help train. But as we all know, uh, manufacturing has changed over the years. Businesses have changed over the years. And the scope of what we see in North Carolina is completely different than what it was 50 years ago. Uh, we see a number of different venues, <clears throat> uh, not only in manufacturing, but uh, there's such diverse programs, and we'll talk about those in just a minute, that we do serve. So things have changed. Um, these are some of the, the, the different types of industries that we do serve. You can see there, not only manufacturing, anybody who is involved in technology, developing technologies, we see a great deal of this down in the Research Triangle area of North Carolina. Warehousing and distribution has gotten to be a, a major, major uh, commodity or factor in North Carolina as far as business is concerned. Um, also, customer support services, we see call centers popping up everywhere. And they employ a great number of people. And how many people have come out of a manufacturing plant into a call center? It's an entirely different environment, and they have to be retrained, and that's what we do for these folks as well. Um, going to talk about air carrier support people, people like FedEx, UPS, things of that nature. Uh, we can help support those and also folks who 
support our military business. We see a lot of that in North Carolina. We have companies and manufacturers who support the military, and we certainly want to engage those folks and provide them the training that they need to, to make things happen. We look at customized training in three different areas, and to be able to qualify for customized training support, we, we look at these three areas, whether you're creating jobs as far as job growth, whether you are adding new technology, uh, production systems, software systems, or if you just need the, the uh, skill sets of your employees enhanced. These are the, the three areas that revolve around customized training. We do have some parameters I'd like to share with you. Um, to, to qualify for these types of funds to support your training, um, you're making a, an appreciable appreciable capital investment. If you're, most companies are doing that nowadays. Uh, anything from, again, adding software, adding new equipment, adding state-of-the-art systems, we can help support training to, for those employees who are engaged in that type of thing. Uh, if you're deploying new technology within the, the company, we can support you to help with that as well. Uh, if you're creating jobs or expanding, uh, we find many companies nowadays or hiring, and this, this has gotten to be a big dilemma for us too, that companies have jobs available, but they don't have a, an influx of people with the right skill sets to fill those jobs, and that creates a, an issue. But with customized training, we can help train those folks to get them up to speed, to, to be able to be productive and to, to make the company profitable. And uh, a need to enhance workforce skills, always a need. Um, we, we constantly see requests coming into our office for anything from basic Excel training, computer, computer training. How many of you remember working at a time when you filled out a time card? You remember that? You don't do that anymore, do you? How do you enter time? Time is done electronically, and many employees don't even have a computer at home. They don't know how to operate a computer, so we help with that and we can give them the skills that they need, not only just to be able to fill out their time card, but they can take these skills and, and use, utilize them throughout their, their personal lives as well. So it, it carries forth. Anything that they learn on the job is transferable and they can use it elsewhere. Um, so workforce skills is extremely important. We're often asking, you know, this is a, sounds like a great deal, but what type of training do you do? What, what's involved in this? And usually, well, we, typically we look at a company and say, let us help, help you. Let us help you understand what we do and you tell us what we need to do as far as putting together a program for you. Um, these are just some of the areas that we, we are involved in. Safety training, every company, every business has safety needs, leadership, how often do we see companies nowadays promoting from within? They take a person who has been in an hourly position over the years and promoting them to a supervisory position. And sometimes that creates issues. Uh, if, if any of you have been engaged in that, not all hourly employees make greater, great leaders. And we help, help define that, help give them the resources and the capabilities to en enhance their skills to become leaders. Uh, continuous improvement. We hear a lot about this not only in industry and manufacturing, we hear about it in hospitals. We hear about it all through the business sector. We want to be lean. Companies have to be lean nowadays. How do we m become more efficient and proficient at what we do? So continuous improvement, improving processes and procedures is extremely important and we have training to help support that. Any kind of technical training that you can think of. The college is doing a tremendous job here uh, in bringing together programs for technology. Uh, I know Dr. Case in, has put, put a tremendous amount of effort in advanced manufacturing in, in bringing new technology on campus to help support the business and industries in this area to make that happen. So any kind of technology training uh, from the basics of welding to advanced PLC, CNC. There's so many different capabilities that the college has to be able to provide this type of training for companies in the area. Any kind of certification training. Everyone likes to have certifications once they, they complete a course of study. 
and we can help with that training to get them to that point. Uh, whether it be APEX training, whether it be uh, AWS certified welding training, we can help train those individuals to get that certification and, and give them the credentials that they need for their current job or for jobs down the road. What type of instructors do we use? Oftentimes we try to use the college instructors that we have right here on campus. These folks do a tremendous job. Most of them have many, many years of experience. Their expertise is, is unsurpassable. So we rely on them very heavily. Uh, sometimes a company that we may be working with has a need for a vendor to come in and provide specific training on a brand new piece of equipment. Uh, the college may not have the capability or the understanding of how that equipment works. We can actually support bringing vendors in to do that training for those employees. Uh, third party contractors. Again, if we don't have the capability internally to provide the training, there are an array of consultants and contractors out there who do. Many of these are re retired professionals who have been in business for many, many years, and they don't want to retire but they have a tremendous amount of expertise and knowledge that they can transfer to these new employees to give them an ed educated education into the types of things that they need, again, to be gainful employees. And company subject matter experts. This we recognize that companies have many people on staff who are the best at what they do, and the companies recognize that and we can engage those folks to provide the training for, for the companies as well. And mostly, and lastly, the ongoing partnership with Stanley Community College. Once we do this training, it's an ongoing process. We establish a partnership here with the college and the companies to make things happen. Uh, the college has continuous resources to, to continue training for these companies, and uh, they do a tremendous job with that. Um, a continuation of service and activities. There's so much here on campus that uh, is offered to the community and, and we're here to support that as well. So, Marion, do you have anything you want to add? I was going to talk about the notion of how this all works. Before I start, good morning, everybody. And thank you for coming uh, this morning on your very busy schedules. We really appreciate it. But before I get started, I would like to show a, a short clip about our that uh, our advanced manufacturing initiative here in, in North Carolina regarding customized training program. In the global economy, advanced manufacturing flexibility is the key. Um, if you're going to manufacture, uh, you need to also focus on the things that are very important to you as a company. And for us and most manufacturing companies, it's safety, it's quality, it's Kaizen, continuous improvement, and it's cost. Without the skilled workers within um, the triad, uh, we would not be able to be here. We certainly wouldn't have been here in the beginning 25 years ago, and our current expansion that we're undertaking right now probably would not have come here. In our joint venture company, the reality is it would have either been here or it would have been in Japan or China. People are really the greatest asset that a company has. A lot of people like working with their hands, and that's our industry, working with your hands. But you have to also work with your mind because mathematics is important, blueprint reading, uh, understanding the chemical material makeup, and people that come in as a welder or a pipe fitter have to have that basic understanding. So that's where by partnering with the community college, we can help put that into a curriculum. And when they get here, they have that education. The North Carolina Community College's skilled workforce pipeline is also critical to the success of GE Aviation in Durham. Here, 
Teams of engineers and technicians integrate advanced manufacturing concepts and cutting edge materials to build the next generation of lighter, more efficient jet engines for the Boeing 787. GE Aviation looks for individuals who not only come with a technical skill set, but we're also looking for individuals who are game changers, clear thinkers. GE is a company that's it's large and it wants to play big. Uh, we leverage a lot of the expertise at the community college level. This is where we can partner. This is where we can add value. This is where we can let them know about the types of skills that we're looking for, the technology that's going to be needed, and how we can marry the two to get the best of both worlds. North Carolina's community colleges support new, existing, and expanding business and industry by fostering job growth, technology investment, and enhanced productivity to boost your company's bottom line. Our customized training programs offer more than 800 courses within eight industry sectors, including biotechnology, aviation and defense, pharmaceuticals, financial services, logistics, information technology, and advanced manufacturing. At least 300 of those courses lead to state-regulated or industry-recognized workforce credentials. But even before they graduate, Students can apply what they've learned in the classroom to the realities of the workplace through our comprehensive apprenticeship program. We learn it, we apply it. My math skills have gone through the roof, reading, comprehension, science. Look at the blueprint, look at the piece you have, and then I'll show you the finished product, and you're like, wow, I know how it goes from this, this, and here, so I can actually see the whole process before I'm doing it. The product we make is very technologically advanced. Uh, lots of computers, lots of hydraulic systems, but how we make it is also very advanced. You know, there's dozens and dozens of robot welding systems, machining centers, CNC equipment that, that everybody has to operate. So the days of, you know, folks being able to drop out of high school and go get a job in the factory are long gone. Um, in fact, a high school education usually isn't enough. You need some advanced training through community colleges or other programs that allow you to have the opportunity to work in a company like Deritachi. Companies must constantly evolve to stay relevant and profitable in this global economy. Likewise, the North Carolina Community College System's customized training programs stay current with industry-specific innovations and new technology to provide a significant return on investment for students and corporate partners. Over the past year, we've saved about $50,000 in training costs, so even that has a, a direct impact to the bottom line. And our, our employees get the benefits. They, they keep those skills forever and they can take them wherever they go. Experts predict that national demand for skilled labor will escalate in the next few years, with many more jobs available than trained personnel can fill. Here in North Carolina, community colleges stand ready to fill that gap, graduating tens of thousands of highly skilled workers each year in order to meet the needs of advanced manufacturing facilities well into the future. In addition, the location of the state on the eastern seaboard with its deep water ports and interstate highways gives its strength as a logistical hub. We love the state of North Carolina. It supported us for many years in many different locations across, across the state. And we are vested and we are here to make an impact in the aviation industry for the long haul. Kaizen, the way we view it, is small change for the good. It's, it's not Big Bang, it's not like what we're doing with our big expansion. That's not Kaizen, that's a big project. But every day, all of us can do better. And as some of these community colleges continue to grow in these advanced technological programs, they do come to us and they ask us, what do you want? What do you need um, in the future from our students as they come out of these community colleges? So um, small change for the good. Everything's not in big steps. A lot of things are in very small steps and they all add up. Uh, to a much, much stronger partnership and relationship with uh, companies like Deritachi and uh, the community colleges. To learn more about how our advanced manufacturing workforce development programs can meet your company's needs, visit us at successnc.org.
<clears throat> is uh, one initiative that the state of North Carolina's community college is going through putting videos together um, to showcase what we can do to assist business and industry in North Carolina to educate and train and provide skilled workers. Um, what I'm going to walk through very quickly is the nuts and bolts on how um, I can assist a company, the college can assist a company in getting training for their employees. Um, I go out and visit um, and to discuss with companies uh, if they have a training issue or training need to see if they um, meet the requirements. I get Don involved where he comes out and he, we tour the facility, we sit down and talk to you. And then um, we determine then if you do meet the parameters for um, getting a, a training through the customized training program. Um, then after we do that, Don gives a stamp of approval I get back and sit down and usually like to meet with all of the managers. I found out in the past couple of years, if you just meet with the human resource manager or the plant manager, um, that we don't get all the input on training that is needed for your facility or your business. Uh, we sit down and we do an assessment, talk about the training needs that you have, and then I turn around and then start building the project with you and for you. Um, and we've, we've covered uh, different uh, varieties of programs for business and industry. Um, we have a great adjunct um, and um, faculty here at Stanley Community College. Uh, they do great jobs of keeping up with certifications, the latest and the greatest, uh, with the support of the college, that we can come out and address those training issues. In fact, I'd like to introduce right here in the audience, we have Betty O'Neill who is one of our adjunct, Betty, stand up. <laughs> I think a lot of you have seen her before and met her before and been through some of her training. Um, then I also have, we have a new assistance in our small business and customized training um, program is Alicia Heron, who's just been starting with us in August of last year. But we sit down and when we work out this program for you, then um, I do all the paperwork, we submit it to the state um, get the cost and everything, and once it's approved, we can run the program for you from one to three years, up to three years max. There's not a limit on um, the actual, what we call the cost of the training. There are um, certain parameters that we do fall under to keep the cost down as we can by using our, our own faculty and um, adjuncts to do the training. And then we also have great regional um, trainers in North Carolina that are experts in safety and um, continuous improvement and also in supervisor leadership training. Um, and then it, the third level is, of course, he talked about with the third party vendors. We can do training for you um, seven days a week, all shifts. Um, in fact, Alicia was out at a company this morning that started training with a company at 7 o'clock this morning. Sometimes we're there at midnight. I um, have a company right now that has requested training on the weekend. So we're very flexible. Um, we do try to take in consideration the, the production of your company, of your business. And if you have to change a date of training or if you have to move things around, we can react very quickly. Um, We've had projects here running from anywhere from $30,000 up to $450,000 worth of training. To give you an example of that, we have five projects right now. We're closing out two at the end of the month, uh, next month, and we have several in the pipeline that we are working with uh, companies right now that are requesting this training. So we do all the work. We really do. We try to be um, not intrusive in your, your production. Um, there are... Um, issues though that if a company comes up and for whatever reason um, they they started a training project and things change we all know that so if they come up and they say you know we can't do any more training it's really we can't support it right now there's no penalty the government is not going to come back and, and say we want our money back um, it's it's a really great tool that I, I'm still, I still be with companies that says, gosh, I didn't know y'all could do that. I didn't know we could do this. But um, I have to um, thank Dr. Case because the last four years I have loved my job because I'm doing what I want to do. She's a passionate person about helping companies, helping business here in Stanley Community College to get the skilled workers that they need. Don Honeycutt is also has been a tremendous resource for me to go to. Vail Carter with 
Central Line of Workforce Development Board, if I can't help you, if the college can't help you with the customized training program because you don't meet the parameters, then we always refer to Central Line of Workforce Development Board because they can help you with a grant. Ours is a project. That's the big difference between the two. Um, we also, um, after we work with a lot of companies doing a project, they're, they are so impressed with the um, skills that our adjunct and um, our faculty have that they do come back and ask us to hold classes for them that don't go through the customized training program. They may put them through the continuing education program and some even send their employees here to take curriculum classes. Um, the um, scale, the, dip, the, the variety of training that we can do keeps growing. Um, I remember, it's been it's a year now, Dr. Kays came to us two years ago. I think Tom George, is he here? He may have, there, uh, is he? Okay. We, we were approached by Dr. Kays to put a CNC machinist program together, which is something that she went out and talked to business and industry to find out what skills, what training do you need that we can't not and are not providing here at Stanley Community College. And one of the things was maintenance training um, and then CNC machining. And she came in in April and said, we need to put a program up in September. I thought it was not going to happen. And we did have a program that started up. This is our second year. And out of the 19 employees, uh, students that are taking the class or have taken the class, the very first class, we had all but two found jobs. The second class that's ending right now, um, we had seven completing the training and four of them already have jobs. They're still going to school, but the companies are working with them. So this is a need that she saw, we addressed, and reacted to very quickly. That's what customized training program is all about. And it's not just in the manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. We do have all types of training that we can provide for you that are maybe proprietary. We work with you. We'll get the vendors in here if we have to and get that training and, and address those issues as quickly as we can. Do you have anything else we need to add? Okay. Thank you very much. I see if I can make this pretty quick. Uh, this presentation I normally do about 45 minutes. They told me I have to shrink it down to like no more than 12. So I'm going to try to do this on the fly. But I do appreciate the opportunity to come and talk with you today and share with you a couple of resources that we offer as a workforce board and we've had the opportunity here in the county to work with some great companies over the last uh, few years to share some of these resources. Okay. Okay, there we go, there we go. Press it hard enough, it'll work. Uh, this, the funding we get for both the programs I'm gonna be talking about today comes from the uh, federal government through our Workforce Investment Act. The program's been in place for many, many years. I've been, uh, as Dr. Kay said, working about nine years with the, with the program and we're spread over seven counties. So it gets pretty thin with my work days uh, trying to share that around. Uh, one of the uh, numbers that I wanted, a few of the numbers I wanted to share with you today, I've worked with 101 companies through the end of uh, 2013 uh, during that nine year tenure that I've been around and uh, we have uh, granted uh, 2.6 million, almost 2.7 million I guess now of uh, dollars to those companies to train 4,852 people. So when you look at those numbers spread out over the seven counties, uh, we feel pretty good about that, and the fact that it's been in place for over 10 years, even prior to my coming on board, I think speaks well, because this has survived several administrations in Washington, and they see it's still a good program. We're hoping to try to complement this with, at the state level, like most states, their general assemblies, Addition, uh, allocate additional money to supplement this and we're hoping that with our 2014 survey that we've done of employers they'll see a need to actually do that they're waiting for our 2014 report to come out which should be uh, probably about six or eight weeks we'll have that written up and uh, they're anxiously waiting for that to see what their options might be to expand it so it's very important when you do get those surveys to respond because we're setting policy based on those surveys now and uh, so when you get 
the email from me. Don't delete it. Fill out the survey and send it back in. The two options that we have right now among about three or four as it relates to work-based training is the incumbent worker training program. Uh, we uh, uh, operate that very much in tandem with, uh, with what these guys have described here this morning. In some cases, we have grants that will be their, their program, they have a project operating and I'll have a grant because we've sort of married it together. And uh, so it's been great to work with them on that basis and we go out and try to meet needs on a, on a consultative basis, like what, what's your problem? And then how can we solve your problem with the resources that we have? And so we go out and try to listen and uh, as uh, Donna's mentioned, try to fill those skills gaps that, that we identify out there. With the on-the-job training, it's a little bit different twist. We have companies that maybe have uh, are in, in expansion mode and they're doing some hiring. We're able to use this fund, these funds to supplement that individual while they're getting up to speed. And typically, the training there might be, say, eight to 20 weeks. And so we split the cost of the payroll while that person is in a sort of a semi-productive state and as they get up to speed with, with uh, work-based learning there with that employer is actually gonna be providing the instruction. The program designed for these both pretty much fit together as, as Don saying, filling skills gaps, focusing on skill certifications as you saw in the movie. Uh, presentation that was done. We have, I think the community college system uh, last year identified 200 different skills certifications that are out there. It was amazing when it had pages and pages, but these are the kinds of skill certifications, nationally recognized credentials or maybe industry recognized credentials that we're trying to fill the gap. So those rate high priority when we were approaching folks. Our program expands beyond manufacturing as the community colleges are basically focused on with those projects that you heard about this morning. We work with all types of businesses. So we've done work and had great success, certainly in manufacturing, and that's where I think most people are feeling the pain when it comes to the skills gaps. But healthcare, we've had great success there, as well as even going into the retail shops. And so it's across the board, and one of my the greatest successes we've had has been a, a literally a mom and pop shop that after the training, their sales increased 38% as a direct result of the training that they received. And another customer service based company, their sales went up 25% after receiving some short, just a few weeks of training for their, for their staff. It's, uh, so there's amazing outcomes that can come in. but. One of the payoffs that we've seen too is certainly every grant that we do, you have to tell us how are you gonna be more competitive as a result of, of these funds coming in. So there has to be a win for that employee with those additional skills, but we wanna see something to the bottom line for the company. So you sort of build that into your, to your um, uh, plan for your training. And um, reducing turnover and, and retention is a key point that we're focusing on now. As, as well as the uh, company bottom line. So we like to see that built into the program design. You know, how do you qualify for the grants or getting assistance from the on-the-job training, contracting? You have to be an established business, uh, at least six months in the case of on-the-job training or a year in the case of the incumbent worker training grants that we offer. And certainly be in good standing, meaning that you're paying your taxes and you're up to speed there in a law-abiding, good corporate citizen. And uh, in both of these programs, you do have to furnish a social security number for those individuals that have been trained. Um, you know, being good patriots to say we're only going to train uh, people who have a legitimate uh, a legal reason to be in the country or, or certainly a native of the country, that's where we want the money to go. The application process for the incumbent worker training is uh, has about four or five pages that you fill in and you write a short narrative of about a page and a half to sort of make your case. With the on-the-job training funds, it's a one-page uh, contract that we, we prepare. You basically go out and it's on an individual, each individual that's been trained. We look at that 
skill set and try to figure out how many weeks it's going to take to get that person up to speed. And then we write up a simple one-page contract and say, this is what, how many weeks they're going to train. This is who's going to be responsible for training that person on the job. And uh, here's how much money we're going to reimburse that company for that training expense that they're incurring for that individual. Uh, the maximum grant amount for the incumbent worker training program is $25,000 per, per grant with a lifetime maximum of $40,000. And then for the uh, on-the-job training, typically right now it could go a little higher, it's particularly if you're a smaller company, but we have some flexible guidelines there to, to pay up to $94.75 per employee for that uh, if you're say a company that has two or 200 or more employees, it caps out because we try to favor those smaller businesses that really have a good need for, for those funds. And there's my telephone number, and um, I, I need to add my uh, email address onto that too, but I have business cards up here. Feel free to give me a call. We do offer um, overview sessions where I do get to do my 45 minute drill down and answer questions on this. We've been uh, happy to have the uh, Stanley, uh, the Locust Campus several occasions that hosted us uh, to come out there and the businesses come out. But I also, uh, I'm able to go out and meet with folks one-on-one. -on -one. I know a couple of times Marion and I have been able to, to team up and go out and that businesses are really impressed when we do that and I think the governor actually wants us to do more of that uh, so I'm certainly open for that and it's not a stretch for us at all so I'll uh, close with that and uh, turn it back over to Dr. Case. What a wonderful uh, group of individuals uh, to deliver information for us this morning. And our session has been jam-packed with information. In fact, we have gotten to the point this morning that we are not going to be able to entertain uh, questions from the audience, but all three of the panelists have agreed that they will stay around and so you can talk with them uh, individually with regards to the services that they offer. I do want to give just a brief update with regards to advanced manufacturing and industrial technology at Stanley Community College. College. But before I do that, would you please join me once again for giving these three individuals a round of thanks and applause. If these three individuals uh, can't help business and industry, there isn't anybody out there who can. I could look to each and every one of you this morning and say thank you for the support that you have given to the Advanced Manufacturing and Industrial Technology projects at Stanley Community College. But there are two people that I specifically want to recognize this morning that are with us. The first one is Ms. Jan Louder. You know Jan Louder with regards to what she does uh, in Stanley County. I know Jan Louder in that aspect, but also for what she does in Raleigh as a member of the State Board of Community Colleges. And she is making sure that the programs that you hear about and these three individuals have addressed as well as the programs that are happening at each and every one of our community colleges are accomplished. And so Jan, thank you for all that you do. I would also like to recognize Dan Gerlach and he is uh, with the Golden Leaf Foundation and uh, Dan, uh, was actually one of the individuals that I had the pleasure of meeting when I traveled uh, down to the Golden Leaf Foundation last November. I got to talk to him about our program here and the needs that we had. And thanks to the Golden Leaf Foundation, we're going to be able to have a state-of-the-art equipped welding lab as well as machining lab. So Dan, thank you very much. In terms of update with regards to renovation for phase one, I can tell you that uh, Lefebvre's construction is uh, actually going to be helping us with that. Uh, they were awarded the bid last week. They will be starting on May the 5th, which is just right around the corner, and they are set to actually finish construction for phase one by August 13th. So that means that come the fall semester here at Stanley Community College, we will have a machining program, we will have a full welding program, and we will have an HVAC program right here on our campus serving the students in Stanley County, and I'm so excited about that. Yesterday, I received some news with regards to what's happening with phase two of our advanced manufacturing industrial technology. And while I can't say yet 
that we have received uh, funding from the EDA in terms of the renovations that we need for that facility, we have moved on to the next level of that grant process. And so hopefully we'll be able to come back to you in a short period of time and let you know that that is moving forward and that is where we will actually put the advanced into manufacturing that we're doing. That uh, phase two will house our robotics as uh, well as uh, anything that we're doing with industrial automation. And so we're very pleased that we're moving forward with that. And once again, I thank each and every one of you for the support that you have given to this program. And Kathy, I believe you're next. Good morning, and I'll take just a couple minutes on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce to thank you for being here this morning. I also wish to thank Paul and the EDC and Krista, as well as the Community College for partnering to bring these events to the community. Um, I'd like to just mention that I've known Don Honeycutt for a number of years. It was good to see him this morning. My years at the Community College enabled me to begin work and friendship with Marion Kinley in 2007, and uh, Marion has always been my go-to expert. Um, I had not been at the chamber, but probably just a couple weeks when I got a call from a local company looking for a specific type of trained employee. I said, I know exactly who can help us find that person. And she did. And we got that solution solved uh, No, on any quick measure. Vail Carter, I've known you for a long time as well. And Central Line of Workforce Development does great things in this county. So this is a great group of folks to have on our side here in Stanley County. And I thank the community college and the community college system for what you do. Chamber of Commerce, I hope all of you are receiving our emails. If you're not, please let me know. We've got ribbon cuttings coming up. We've got business after hours coming up. I'd just like to Leadership Stanley's completing another year. I'm going to graduate at the end of May. Uh, 24 students in that group and uh, one of our own, Stephanie uh, Gresham from the office is graduating this year. We've had a wonderful year and uh, look forward to graduating another group and kicking another group off in August. Um, we also have our Chamber Golf Open coming up on Wednesday, June the 4th. Uh, if you don't play golf, we've got great sponsorship opportunities, or you can do both. You can sponsor and play golf. And the CAFE program, this is a program that Marianne helped start here at the college and uh, the Stanley County School System. Dr. Griffin enables employees to attend, educators, administrators, counselors, and we spend two weeks this year, courtesy of Central Line of Workforce Development, in taking these folks around through the county letting them visit plants. Marion helps set up all those tours, and the chamber works very closely with that event to take these folks from the school system to the sites, let them hear what needs are, so that we are working with the school system all throughout the educational process to get the right training for the companies that we have and to let our students and our educators know that we have jobs here in this county that do pay well and there are great things going on here. So on behalf of the chamber, thank you all. Well, we're gonna wrap this up and I'd like to thank all of you for coming today and for participating and special thanks to uh, Dr. Kays for moderating today's uh, panel and for hosting us here today. And uh, thank you for your support uh, and uh, co-sponsoring this event along with the chamber. Um, a couple quick things I wanted to just mention. Um, we, our next event will be uh, the month, probably, I guess it would be in July. And uh, we had planned previously to do an event on export promotion. And uh, that's, that's the goal for our next program. Uh, it's a way to, uh, for companies here in Stanley County to boost their sales and to uh, grow their business. There's a lot of opportunities out there, uh, especially here in the uh, Charlotte region with uh, the logistics uh, operations that are here. And, and we're gonna uh, put a panel together to discuss what some of those opportunities are. Um, a couple things uh, about uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, activities uh, with regard to um, our board's involvement in um, trying to uh, refine our strategic planning efforts for the next year. You'll, I think you'll see a lot more effort uh, being placed on uh, expanding our uh, existing industry program. Uh, this is one aspect of it, the Business Breakfast Series. 
Um, and also we're going to be uh, focused on expanding our efforts in the product development and look forward to partnering uh, with uh, the city and others to, to do that. Um, and uh, we have, we're very excited about some of the project activity we have. We have 28 uh, active projects right now, some that are uh, getting very close to um, moving forward with their plans. And we thank uh, uh, Marion and, and uh, the uh, panelists here for working with us on, on providing a training uh, support for them. And um, uh, some of the other things that uh, uh, you'll, we'll be talking about uh, at future events will be infrastructure uh, related projects that we're doing and and uh, um, I think if, if you are in the uh, North Stanley area understand that uh, Piedmont Natural Gas is is uh, doing a survey about uh, gas needs in that corridor so if you get a, uh, a flyer or get a uh, questionnaire from them we encourage you to uh, uh, take that seriously if, if that's something that uh, you see in your future in the next five years, uh, uh, the, a, a, a need for, for uh, natural gas service. So uh, if, you, if you, that comes across your uh, mailbox or your door, we appreciate you uh, taking a close look at that. Um, and with that, I'd like to uh, say thank you again to the panel and uh, thank you for coming out. And uh, please let us know if you have any specific needs with regard to workforce development or anything else. And we'll uh, certainly work with you to put a program together, a project together, and make sure you get in front of the right individuals here or um, elsewhere at Department of Commerce or other partners and allies in, in the economic development arena here in Stanley County. So thank you very much and have a great day.